Hello, um, yeah, welcome to another um, video of mine where I talk about strange things. Um, no, this 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 one is actually really important, and like I, tr I've been meaning to 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 do this for a long time. Um, it's been requested by a few people, so I'll try and remember to tag them. Um, this obviously as the heading says is all about karma okay so um i've made a ton of notes because this is not something i can just wing it and just kind of you know blag it as i just make up as i go along um now i've made lots of notes and i've sort of pulled in lots of concepts and ideas from all the different things that i've read and sort of experienced as well and sort of blah 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 um so i hope this is helpful i think like i think um like wherever you are, right, on whatever kind of path or journey, yeah, whether you whether you don't you're not into any kind of divination or spirituality whatsoever, I think this is still very useful, even if you're a complete skeptic. This is very this is still gonna be useful because there's a lot of information that just kind of anyone can relate to, yes. Yeah? So you don't have to be into all this kind of stuff, yeah. It's not about that. Um but, however, if you are on a spiritual journey and you are kind of very interested in vibrations and energies and atom or particularly karma, I think I'm hopefully going to demystify this um, and discuss a kind of a lot of... I'm going to discuss in great detail about what karma is and what how it works and stuff because I think there's a lot of people out there who are on a spiritual journey and reading tarot or watching tarot or you know, trying to do whatever it is they can, meditate, yoga, you know, blah, 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 manifest, etc., etc., And they, they just don't understand what how karma actually works, okay? That it's this mystical kind of thing, yeah? So I'm going to hopefully add a lot of logic to it, a, a lot of kind of... Well, let's just dive in and see. Um, as always, fire comments below and stuff like that. Um, a couple of things I'm going to start saying up front to these things. Um, I don't charge for any 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 of my readings. I don't charge for any of these videos. They are all free to consume on multiple channels. So if anyone messages you or anything like that, claiming to be me, asking for coin, I don't do that. I do not take any payments. I do not do any private readings either. Okay. So just to be clear about that. Um, so firstly, so my first point to my notes is understanding karma, what it is, okay? And like I said, many people kind of, I don't like the word karma because it's, it's it, it, mean, it, it has very specific, it has a very specific meaning that has been adopted, the word has been adopted, particularly in the Western world and completely misunderstood. Um, I would even go as far to say that even all over the world it like the the very concept of karma has been distorted and changed and tweaked and used in ways that kind of still sort of presents an element of fear in an individual okay you know we have this sort of um you know it's even become you know memeified you know where people we've seen kind of memes or of stuff of people receiving instant karma you know little kind of clips and things and that goes viral and stuff like that but look i want to i want to hopefully try and so so this sorry the subject of this is mastering karma okay this is what this whole video is gonna be about okay it's not just a case of understanding it it's about mastering karma how do you actually become a how do you become how do you kind of control your destiny right how do you um ensure that you can actually gain your life and the universe to work with you okay not against you because that fundamentally is what karma is yeah it's like it's constantly being hit with stuff that kind of is coming from external angles and sources or whatever or old kind of traumas coming back to haunt and they give us they they prevent us they prevent us from growing okay so the, the bit, reason why karma is such a big problem for people particularly those on a spiritual journey is that they do all the work they really try hard and then stuff hits them and they just kind of go oh how the the the, the level of injustice and 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 feeling of unfair and particularly if they were on kind of like you know like soul journeys and all this sort of stuff it just 
it it mounts up into this whole thing and karma becomes this sort of almost accepted fate okay it's like oh i'm i'm getting this because i did this in the past and i deserve it okay and it's almost like this they, they begin to kind of wear the karma as a badge of honor and fundamentally it's it's painful or it can be painful and it can also be restrictive and it actually slows the progression and the growth right what i'm what I'm trying to say is that if you truly understand karma and take on board what I'm saying and actually kind of hopefully pr uh, put into practice some of the very easy kind of things that I'm going to like give you in terms of just conceptual thinking, it's not a case you have to go out there and do a ton of work. Stuff is very easy to gain. It is literally just about reframing and reshaping your understanding of karma and what it is and how it operates and how it works in the universe once you break that barrier i'm telling you you will become a master and you begin you can you can begin to operate a very very high level for yourself you begin to kind of work in your higher self and maintaining that that's the, that's the, that's the barrier there so people's understanding of karma is is very disjointed it's uh, there's an awful lot of information out there that right kind of goes down all kinds of rabbit holes um but I, i'm just going to kind of try and break it down as simply as possible so that it can put so that you can understand it in a way that is beneficial to you okay right so how you view karma yeah is going to affect how it affects your reality okay so your very understanding is literally going to going to manifest and create how the karma kind of interacts with your reality okay people need to understand is that in order to understand karma you have to understand energy okay it's how you view energy the very concept of energy you have to understand vibrations and magnetism those three things are the key okay and once you have a basic understanding of those three things that pretty much make up your entire existence and reality, okay, you can begin then to, those are the key things to understanding your fate in this cosmos, right? Okay, so your destiny, your fate, whatever you want to call it. Now, fate and destiny, okay, despite being in many cases predetermined, you have free will and you have the ability to control your destiny and your fate okay if you do not um understand karma fate and destiny is handed to the gods okay it's handed to the external universe right? but, like gods are just energy right they're not like physical things they are energies okay and like it's, it's kind of it's, it's hard to kind of get for people to get their head around that so if i say to a god or planets or anything like that, i'm just talking about energy okay no different from the energy that beams down from the sun it's an energy yeah so the sun is a god it's creating energy for all life on earth yeah that's just how you have to look at these things it's not looking at it looking at the sun as a god say you know with this kind of like um with this concept that it that it I've got to be careful here because I'm going down a route which I didn't really want to go down. It's not in my notes. These gods and these energies, they do have uh, Plato and Proclus and that talk about them being intelligible and having intellect, okay, which is true to a degree. But what they didn't understand, or it's not a case they didn't understand, what they didn't explain or expand upon, or probably understand to be fair, is that the understanding from the ancient Egyptians, so before Plato and before Proclus and that, was that yes, these are gods and they are intelligent and they are intelligible, but that is only because they are made up of atoms and atoms are literally in every single thing. So the concept and, the, and understanding from old spirituality and their old and understanding of vibrational energy is that because all atoms are connected and all atoms are vibrating, yeah, the very kind of behavior of one set of atoms or behave or, or let's just say my hand even moving here is going to create a wave of energy that will be is registered in the direction that it is is, it is moved so if i i could create and i can move the air right and they have an effect and they will hit here now obviously from a material self and a human being that it's, we just can't we can't see or register that because we are limited by the senses that we possess in the material form okay doesn't mean it doesn't exist okay so energy can be displaced and created and moved it would sorry energy is being created displaced and moved and manipulated 
literally every single second. Everything you are doing, even by blinking, every single thing, there is a creation. There is an element of energy and vibration and movement, etc. Okay? So forgetting all the kind of like all the all the all the religious, spiritual, um, kind of mystical stuff that I talk about often and souls and all this kind of stuff, just by understanding that you live in a reality, yeah, that is made up of literally atoms around you you're the you are made of the atoms and everything around you you begin to kind of understand that there isn't if you were only to perceive your reality in just the terms of atoms yeah so if we were to literally just bl imagine we blindfolded ourselves but we were able to just then or let's just say you invent some glasses yeah that allow you to see just atoms right okay a bit like that film they live yeah you literally wouldn't be able to distinguish anything. You would just see nothing but atoms. You wouldn't be able to see the separation between the self and between your your inner self, your inner your the the inner mechanisms and, and makeup of you, as uh, in relation to the external uh, external world. So there is no in that respect there is no inner and outer. In that respect there is no kind of firmament. In that respect there is no space or core it's all connected yeah it's just how we perceive this reality and is is kind of done in a way that is it's kind of done in a way oh my god i'm getting myself stuck in down a rabbit hole already how we perceive these the the, the formations and the vibrations of these atoms yeah is 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 literally limited and bound by our our ability to only see one percent of the light spectrum only be able to only be able to hear a certain frequency, etc., etc. Only be able to taste certain things. So human beings in the physical material sense are very limited. So that means we can't see X-rays, gamma rays, etc. We can't see all this energy that we're creating. We can't see all the energy that's coming into us. Do you understand now? And I'm going to, before I dive into this, and again, this is not to advocate um, what I'm about to say. I'm just being very, um, uh, I'm just giving you an experience. And I'm just talking very candidly about this for anyone and whether you have or haven't you will be out this is this is about an understanding so for for anyone who has ever consumed psychedelics okay and experienced um a i would say like a above a moderate dose of of a psychedelic okay one thing that people who have who have taken psychedelics and experienced psychedelics should understand and if they don't they're about to learn something very key but i'm going to teach them something very important now is that when you take said psychedelics what it does is it basically replicates what the pineal gland in your brain is supposed to do secreting dmt and this dmt is a hallucinogenic and some people call it the seat of the soul the, the soul you know the, the eye to god blah 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 what it effectively does is you your reality distorts and changes so you get to the colors become brighter um sounds become more different you can taste colors there's all kind of crazy stuff that people on such during psychedelic trips experience what they may what they should really know about it though which is really important is that their surroundings okay so they're the main concepts of when you're when you're during a psychedelic experience you have to understand scene set and setting okay so the very place that you are the very place where you are at so let's just say if you are in a if you took psychedelics and you went down to the catacombs underneath paris that will be a nightmare trip quite literally you will have the most traumatic experience of your life i can guarantee that you will not have a good trip if, however, you are above land, surrounded by butterflies and beautiful plants, and it's a sunny day, and you've got, you know, loads of, you just, you're just surrounded by visceral beauty, your trip will be enhanced. This is a absolute fact. Okay, there is no the, the only so what these psychedelics do. So your your surroundings heavily affect you. Also, sound does. If anyone who has been in a psychedelic trip if they listen to low vibrational music it will bring them down and it can actually induce levels of fear anxiety and etc etc and a lot of people don't realize that often the reason they go into a bad trip is because of the vibrational sounds that are around them they are in, you become incredibly sensitive when your brain begins to be activated with chemicals like dmt or psilocybin etc what happens you become hypersensitive to a reality that you cannot normally perceive there is a whole argument about and one could dissect i'm not not want to talk about psychedelics too much but it's kind of important in terms of karma is that you can 
And the whole argument that is this you creating your reality or are you literally is are the blinkers coming off and you're seeing a reality that you can't see so there's an interesting concept there with psychedelics it doesn't matter uh, well it does matter and I'm, i know the answer to it the truth is is that the reality is created by you okay so what you know what you think begins to materialize so if you begin to go on a bad trip and you're thinking about snakes you will see snakes okay um an interesting proposition for Oh, I don't want to go down. Yeah. Uh, no, we're not, I'm, I'm being told not to. I was going to talk about Moses and the burning bush, and I'm not going to go down that route. But the point being is that you become hypersensitive. If you put on 432 hertz, frequency, sound bath music can be a singing bowl or any, or any kind of like harps or like natural, natural organic string or kind of like music that is set to a certain frequency, yeah, particularly 432 hertz or there and above. If you are then in the process of, of of a psychedelic trip, your trip will be elevated. Now, for all my psychonauts out there, go test me. Go test this. I'm telling you, you're going to have an amazing trip. Because what happens is these vibrations and this energy elevates your emotions. What people realize, begin to realize with psychedelic trips is their very emotions become so heightened, which means this is why you cry with laughter. You're like, you unstoppable, unbelievable comedy. Like, in many cases right if you the, the most inane silly things become the most hilarious and also the most inane um non-threatening things can become deeply traumatic so you can look at something a spoon can suddenly become a scorpion right okay i shouldn't have manifested that don't look at spoons when you're next trip in <laughs> no that's a joke seriously um the point being is that also so 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 during the actual experience the the, the very frequencies and vibrations and visual vibrations that you see affect your trip what is a visual vibration it literally is an uh, energy coming off of an image so if i was to present a picture of a nude man or woman or whatever and they were particularly desirable to you that is going to create an energy that is going to create a physical emotion within you okay you will feel it yeah there is the fact that we are disconnected physically bears no relevance okay i've not physically touched you you've not physically touched it's not a real Im it's not a real person it's just an image yet it still has a powerful effect on how you perceive on how you feel right so the very the very images and imagery and sounds around us affect us all the time especially on a subconscious level now in terms of karma what happens is right is that because and i talk about this all the time because human beings operate from mind and we value our ego and our mind so much we all think we're clever we're more clever and smarter than we actually are we also think that we know better and you know this level of ego and kind of well i've read this and i've studied that and i'm i've got this phd or i know this or i've done my internet research we're all guilty of that right it doesn't matter if it's conspiracy theory or science-based stuff or spirituality or whatever the very concept of the human mind and i.e. being connected to the ego is a limitation because it can only process the core senses that you rely on that I've just explained to you are deeply limited in the actual reality that is around us, right? You do not see what is actually around you. You only see 1% of what is actually around you. Though you cannot physically see 99% of the light and imagery and the things that are around you, okay? The human eye is not capable of doing that. The third eye, on the other hand, is. And that's why when you take psychedelics, it act, it kind of replicates what the pineal gland eye, the third eye does, and it opens up a reality that is not normally there okay and again going back to the kind of the esoteric understanding as above so below as within so without and i'll come back to that it you know you you generate your reality and that's what very much what karma is okay so that's the why i'm putting it in the context of, of a psychedelic trip and i'm not advocating to go and do this you don't need to every single person trips virtually every single night when you dream that is what a trip is if you have a lucid dream that is even closer to the experience okay so your brain naturally creates dmt in your pipe from your pineal gland that's what it's designed to do however 
There is arguments about certain chemicals like fluoride restricting that. I personally believe it does because I've done the test on myself. I don't consume any fluoride and my dreams are way stronger than they ever were when I was brushing my teeth with fluoride. So I highly suggest you cut that stuff out. Although do your own research and blah, blah, blah. Um, but karma, okay, so karma is energy, okay? It is literally energy that you have created, okay? So if you're out there creating bad energy, it goes out there and eventually it may come back to haunt you. Now there is a way to master this. If you operate strictly from your mind, okay, it, you are forever going to be the, at the mercy of all your past energies, okay? And like I always say, the mind kind of like, the mind should be a slave to the soul. At the moment, and I'm not being horrible, and, I, and, I, and I'm speaking also to myself on this because mo I try to operate for my soul as much as possible, but it is such a difficult battle because so much of our reality is based from the mind. So we often find ourselves operating from our ego and our mind, not our heart and our soul, okay? Understanding this is literally the key to mastering your karma or the karma that is around you. So, you cannot understand karma truly until you accept and understand your reality in terms of energy and vibrations. Okay? So, if, for example, you took a compromising photo of yourself, I don't know why anyone would do that, and then you lost it, hid it, or posted it online, and then deleted it, but someone copied it, etc. Once that energy is out there, there is a good chance it could come back. And in 10, 20 years time, you may not be in the same position you were when you took said photo. So every single action and every single thing that we are creating right now, you should take we should really be very incredibly mindful about it the future consequences of said action okay so obviously i'm good there's two aspects to this there is past karma that you've already done so all the karma from your past and, I'll, and i'm going to go and break into these things and then there is present kind of behavior and stuff so this is kind of where we're heading okay and how you're beginning to understand the shape of it so aha interruption um so back where was i understanding our connection of all energies okay is really important understanding how these energies shape our internal emotions like in the example i just gave is very important then understanding how these emotions within us shape our external reality i.e our behaviors okay and then understanding how these ex our external reality shapes our inner cosmos okay so this very mechanism of what you put out and how it makes you feel and how you feel then affects the next thing you put out is just constant okay this is just a constant revolution of self okay how you when you if you are able to master your karma and bring this this kind of exchange of energy between what you are creating in your reality and what you are receiving, the, the key of what you want to do is get that to a status of balance, okay? Balance and equilibrium is the absolute key. This is not about becoming pious and a monk and celibate and never, you know, just, you know, shutting yourself off from the world and going and living up in a Tibetan hill or mountain or whatever. That is the extreme version of one side of it, okay? There is duality in reality and life, okay? And I'm going to come to this, okay? But what you really are trying to achieve is this inner balance where, to the point where, you know, I would say you can tip it in another way, but where what you are putting out is literally generating that peace and happiness within you, okay? That's where you're striving to get to. And I would even go say there's a layer more to it, which is love. You know, that what you're creating out there is bringing you nothing but love. Although there is an element where love can serve the ego and the mind, but I don't want to, let's not go down that rabbit hole. So, this energy and every single creation that you are 
manifesting or creating and every single action, every single thought, every single word, every single behavior, every single like The reason why thought is so connected, and I'll come into this later, is that all your actions and behaviors are derived from thought. Again, like I said, we all operate from our mind. So the trick is to really start to try and do one thing which is to operate from heart and soul because I can guarantee you if your behaviors before you acted on something okay so if you had a have a thought and you have an idea and you're going to act on it whether it's whatever is by avoiding that impulse and just doing it without, th without it's not a case of about thinking the thinking has been done that's why you're about to do it even if that is a you know an impulsive thing it's still a, it's an impulsive thought the key is to interject it with a feeling and understand how is this truly going to make me feel? Also, how is it also truly going to make that person feel? Because you, by in say creating a negative action that lowers the vibration of another individual, okay, that individual may be taken from your reality immediately. They may, you know, you know, um, get on a train and go, or you may be on a phone call and you hang up or whatever. There's a million different situations. Yeah, what I'm saying is that that energy. Is then becomes possessed within that person okay and that then will be manifested or transmuted depending on the individual you'd be very lucky if that person transmutes that energy and goes ah, i'm not bothered by it you know you're very lucky in order if you if you are able to give and dish out karma to people like that the way that karma will come back to you is if it's not transmuted i.e. that person doesn't forgive your actions and doesn't doesn't just accept it and love it and move on if they hold and harbor it what ends up happening is that energy tends to manifest it can either be suppressed or buried and eventually comes out in multiple forms okay but you were part of the creation of it okay this is the key now this is not to say that when you create and you create a bad action that it is naturally going to come back to you. This is the misconception of karma and this is what I want you to really understand. You are not going to pay for every single bad action you have done. Let me repeat that. You are not necessarily going to pay for every bad action that you have done. There is a choice and the choice is this. You will end up receiving what karma depending on the vibrational state that you are so for example if you remain in a low vibrational state i can guarantee you you are going to attract low vibrational behavior and low vibrational situations and low vibrational um uh, uh karma like low vibrational things will happen to you okay because like attracts like okay this is all about the magnetism and the energy of the world and the reason why i say that yeah is because this is where this is where the power of transmutation really comes in right in the sense that the karma the, let's say the bad action you put on that person yeah and they transmuted it and they went you know what? i forgive it love it and move on they've quashed that they've quashed that energy for you right so there is always the potential that the karma that you are creating can be quashed and and literally diminished yeah it's taking bad vibes and bad energy and saying no i'm not going to allow this to continue i'm going to turn it into something positive now every human being has the ability to do that and i'm going to come back to that in a second so the point of what i'm trying to make here is that if you imagine that instead of thinking of these actions uh, as and these kind uh, the uh, these calm this karma as actions think of them as seeds okay so the, the so plant so i've written here planting seeds of goodness wherever you walk is key the more good you put out there the more your reality will be surrounded by these good energetic vibrations that you have created and those around you that are receiving said goodness will even if they are low vibrational themselves it cannot but have a positive effect because they will not necessarily be in the position to transmute that goodness into negativity and if they are you still have a choice and free will to then not pour into them and to cut them off again this whole thing low vibrational people are not worth dealing with it's not to say it's not to say that like you just cut people out of your life you all you can ever do is pour into them but it is understanding as well that if you're getting nothing but 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 bad stuff back from them you have to protect your energy okay so don't allow people to plant seeds of of, of doubt in you or negativity etc like i said again 
going back to the psychedelic concept, your surroundings are literally going to affect your inner motions. So you have a choice in, your, in the reality that is around you. You get to decide. You That is within your power. I know there's probably some situations where people say, yeah, but what about if someone's in prison and all this? That is true. If someone is in, say, locked up in and you know for how many years or whatever yes they're surrounded they might, may not be able to change so they might not be able to change the actual physical confinement and containment but they can change what they are consuming i.e literature okay and visual art whatever okay they could go get into painting and other kind of things to absolutely begin to kind of shape their reality and the abundance that can come from that is infinite doesn't matter if they are caged in okay so planting seeds of goodness for others will reap you your rewards. That is the very essence of karma. If you run around town throwing shit at people, expect those people to get pissed off and they will throw some back at you. Sometimes even harder or even more painful than just dirt. So really understand that. You get out of your reality what you put in. This is where the ego and mind is your weakness because what we never want to do we never want to face up to our own actions. We never want to accept that the very reality we are stuck in or whatever or the very problems we are facing is because we created our reality. We didn't put up the barriers to shut that person out. We welcomed them. Another interruption. Okay, let's try it. Literally, all of the energy you're putting out is literally coming straight back at you okay so you're you we have to take a level of responsibility so i kind of jumped a message section here but what i'm effectively kind of saying by that is it's not the, the, the problem with the human mind, right, is what happens is, is something will come to us, something will happen to us, right? Now, if we perceive that as karma, yeah, and mentally, yeah, we go, oh, this is because we connect it to something that we did in the past, even though it's not related, right? That is a very low vibrational way of looking at things because what we instantly kind of do is we kind of do this whole, I deserve it, it was my fault, etc., etc. Okay, that is not accepting responsibility, right? What that is is that is accepting your fate and your destiny. Okay, the way that a uh, uh, let's just let a way a high vibrational person would look at said karma would not be to say and accept. Okay, this is my punishment. I deserve this, and I have to deal with it and take it on the chin. What a high vibrational person will understand is that they in the past had put out the same level of karma or something to of an equivalency at some stage in their life right and if they could repeat the process again they would obviously not do it okay but what they can do is transmute that karma so that it doesn't stay within them and eat them up and then maintain it as a negative low vibrational energy within them they also don't just then kick it out to other people and pass it on. So this is what I class as shared karma, okay? So all energy is experienced and shared because we are all connected via atoms, okay? If I, whatever I, whatever action I create will have an effect on the surrounding and anyone within that vicinity, whether it's a word I say, whether it's an action I do, whatever, okay? So everything has whatever everything you put out there you should be hyper conscious about in terms of is it low vibrational or high vibrational it's very simple the more high vibrational stuff you put out there the better right so planting seeds of goodness wherever you go gives you more chance of positive energy coming back to you okay and I've written here as well like planting seeds from the heart and the soul and not the ego and the mind. So this is key. So this means that when you plant, when your actions and your behavior, like I said, instead of just going from the thought and the impulse and the mind and the analyzing why you're justifying, why you're about to do what you are about to do, okay? First, firstly, analyze its vibrational level. Is this karmic? Is this low vibrational? Is what I've just said or I'm about to do? Try and get it before you do it, you know? Or, you know, even if you do it, yeah? That apology, following up with that instant apology, you know, I didn't mean that, I'm sorry, etc. 
will help reclaim and trans that will help transmute it in the motion so even if you say something to someone that you then deeply regret by apologizing the sooner the better because then it allows them to transmute it okay it doesn't take the words away but at least you have done your part okay you have transmuted the 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 effect of what you've created okay it still is down the individual whether they hold on to it okay but you know so karma is a shared experience this is why it's why human beings are so diff uh so different and unique because the way that we communicate is so misunderstood we have such a little understanding and appreciation that the simplest action can have such a huge effect the very, you know, I, I don't want to like draw it down to something so simplistic, but there's probably, you know, there's there's no doubt that some of the most grievous, like tragic world events, if you really drill far back enough down to the what started and where the very first domino, the very first domino was tipped, it always comes down to a much smaller event. And the, the, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, the First World War, is a classic example of that. The assassination of one person led to full-blown world war. There's no logic or justification for millions of people losing their lives just because one rich aristocratic person died. What should have happened is it should have been transmuted at that very point. So... And that's an extreme example. I'm not saying what your actions are going to go and cause go and cause World War Three, but if we start looking at the uh, looking at our looking at our reality in that way, we it, you know in the sense of like just understanding the consequences and the knock-on effects of all of our actions, we can really be, begin to be extremely mindful about what we're doing and the seeds that we're sowing. And I've written here, and this is for from, for those people out there who are on the spiritual journey. The saying, as above, so below, yeah? I've talked about this, and I wrote about this in a, in a reading, I think. It's not so as in S-O. I think it's so as in sowing seeds. So your spiritual, that you and your higher self in the spiritual realm is going to be a mirrored reflection of what you are sowing, the seeds you are sowing below, here on earth. Do you understand? And the same goes with as within, so without, right? How you feel on the inside is going to greatly depend on what seeds you sow in your external reality, okay? If you are out there sowing goodness and just giving nothing but love and kindness out there to people, even if they treat you like shit, trust me, you can sleep peacefully at night knowing that you are doing the best that you possibly can. And if you, and every day that you continue to do that and not let whatever external influences affect you, I can guarantee you by the very law of the universe which is beyond any man-made written law the law of the universe will begin to provide back to you because your seeds of goodness will have a natural magnetic attraction back to you if you go out there and you plant loads of seeds they will harvest and you will reap what grows it's basic basic stuff if you go out there planting weeds weeds will grow yeah like you either want fruit or weeds you choose yeah your weeds is your negative anger, hate, violence, etc. Or your fruits is the love that you put out there and the kindness, which coming back to you is way more powerful, more beneficial to you as an individual. Okay. So understanding, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, the more weeds you, have, more more seeds that are weeds out there you plant the more uprooting you're going to have to do in the future yeah the more the the, the less fertile your reality is going to be in providing you an abundance right okay you just have to really think about energies as seeds and planting and growing okay your energy should be like you know yeah we're like you know, uh, do you know I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start going off track a bit i want to try and stick to this thing because yeah otherwise i'll end up going off on mad tangents so so hopefully you're understanding the seeds of karma and how it relates and how that those seeds of karma relate to the energy and the vibrations in your reality okay so we've got that phase and section out of the way okay and feel free to bang questions down if you don't understand any of that i will try and do my best to answer questions and explain it more but I, I from my point of view i don't think i can make it any more plain or simple than that i'm not and i am simplifying it it's obviously vastly more complex than what i've just explained but hopefully this gives you a really good overview and a basis and later on in the end of my notes i'm going to come back to kind of give you ideas and concepts 
to further that, okay? So shared karma. This is where it gets complicated. So now we go down the next level. Understanding the duality of life, right? We can't just have love and light out there, okay? There has to be a duality. Sometimes we have to plant seeds that we don't want to, yeah? We have to plant negative seeds because sometimes we have to create, we have to be karma for other people, yeah? So sometimes we have to be like that, that kind of negativity, yeah? That is in order to sometimes to not only humble others but also to humble ourselves okay so it's not to say that this isn't about trying this is what i was saying earlier it's not about trying to live this impossible existence of never doing or saying anything wrong yeah it's just really really having a becoming a master and an, and truly understanding that the seeds you plant because you have all types of seeds within you you possess all of it you possess the light the dark you possess the fruit the weeds yeah you possess the thorns, you possess everything. Every type of seed that you could possibly plant is possessed within you, okay? Knowing where to plant these seeds is key because we can't, you know, there are elements where we have to plant seeds of truth that hurt people, okay? That's just a fact. That is that is a strong, powerful position to be in, but it mustn't be misused or abused, okay? If, let's just call them seeds of fear, yeah? Let's just say that for an example, right? No one wants to induce fear into people, right? But there is a level that you have to do that, on a, and I'll give you a basic analogy on that. As a parent, there is certain levels of fear that we have to install, install in our children, right? We do have to make them fearful of things like fire or, you know, touching boiling hot pans and things like that because we we understand and we know that like we want to we want to it's not a case of discipline them but you know we have to educate them to a level where they understand the consequences yeah before the actions happen right so seeds the seeds that you're planting just need to be used in very careful ways and i'm going to come back to a few more analogies about that later okay so sometimes we need to intentionally plant seeds of doubt or negativity to humble ourselves or others seeds of truth and not karma right so, th so that's that's why i'm telling you this is <laughs> running as a reason that's why i have to make notes this doesn't mean that if you put if you put something out there that creates a negative emotion and feeling in someone because they didn't want to hear it or they didn't like it, right? That is not karma for you. They may want to strike you down and hate you. They may want to kill you, right? Depending on what truth you're telling them. But the reality is, is that that doesn't necessarily mean karma for you, okay? But how and the way that you plant these seeds and how they are nourished can be done in so many different ways weeds are necessary okay they're not completely useless okay and it is just understanding the the intricacies and the delicate kind of manner in the kind of where you place these things and how they will form and shape your reality okay I would say that when you plant in seeds of truth to people, the way to counteract that low vibrational energy that you are projecting onto them or, or creating within them is to then offer solutions and not just offer them problems or, you know, present to them their misgivings and all their failings, etc., etc. Most people know their failings. The reason why they are in the situation they're in is because they don't have a solution. So it is not necessarily justified and right for us just to point out the obvious, which is you did this, you're disgusting, you're bad, and you're wrong, and blah, 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 blah. It is to present to them a solution or an option. Now, if they want to take that on board or not, that is their free will. Everyone is entitled to be a low vibrational person if they want to. It is not your job to make everyone in the world like you, okay? you We always have to get into the point of, of respecting and loving our enemies because they teach us what we don't want to be. If they weren't there, we would have no measurement tool against that. And we could find ourselves slipping down into behaviors that we can't measure against. That is literally the Hellenistic world we live in now. We all, on a social level, engage with things we know are bad for us. We know that they are bad for us, but we don't necessarily have the solutions to do better. A good example of that is petrol in cars. We know when we walk along the road 
that if it's a foggy or winter's day, we can see the smoke coming out of the back of the, of the cars. And we can, on those days, often smell and taste the pollution more because we, and we, so we know how bad it is. And yet we will still get in a car ourselves and drive because our ego and our mind and the necessity of our living kind of keeps us in this sort of trap where we don't have the solution, right? So rather than just condemning those people that are polluting or whatever or shouting at the people stuck in traffic which is kind of where the protest element becomes divide division and polarization is we rather than just pointing out the, the obvious failings we have to come up with solutions okay i want to see like movements like extinction rebellion and the just stop all that yeah 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 i get it i get it right but come up with solutions don't just come up with the obvious start actually living in that solution rather than just rather than putting fire on fire yeah right throwing a tin of paint over a painting yes it gets you attention but for all the low vibrational reasons because straight away that is like worse than shouting at someone yeah that's literally like they don't want to listen so you're going to shout at them yeah look i'm the number one best example of someone who has experienced has done that throughout my entire life is shouting my opinions and then wondering why no one listens yeah because it doesn't work like that okay you have to offer people solutions you can't just point out their failings okay no matter how bad or low vibrational you deem it to be you are not judge jury and executioner my friend okay worry about your worry about the the, the 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 energy you're creating around yourself yeah because if you begin to create your own solutions others will mimic and imitate surely that is a better world to live in right there is nothing we talk about food crisis yeah right listen i'm trying to find solutions all my time all my always myself yeah and we're always limited by resources stuff like that literally we talk about food crisis right all the time and yet there is there is an obvious solution that food grows on trees. There's nothing to stop us from going out there and just planting seeds. I used to know work of a guy who used to go out gorilla seed planting but do it with flowers, which is really cool and funky. And he's the he's like a he's a really quirky, creative guy, like a lot older than me. And he would sneak out and dress up and go out and just like plant like flower seeds in all these random strange places around london and create these kind of like graffiti bombs of flowers it's a it's a really cool concept i mean doing that with food would actually have a benefit as well yeah like there's all these laws and regulations oh you can't do this you can't do that well we have to challenge these and make find the solutions not just kind of accept our fate yeah there's a kind of random examples but you you kind of get what i'm saying so so let me get back to it so so we collectively share karma, okay? That means that if someone else is over there creating negative stuff, we by by gen by by without even wanting to be involved, we are connected to it. When you open up social media and you read those triggering headlines, you are now a part of that energy. You are part of that emotion. You are part of that collective anger and hate fueling the constant low vibrational energy that is just bombarded amongst society and as i always point out look at all of my videos about plato's allegory of the cave it's all designed to keep people in these low vibrational states because they don't want people out there doing good that doesn't serve money it doesn't serve society society thrives on low vibrational stuff and when you begin to see that and you begin to understand that it's like, like i'll give you an example it's like the the tragic um derailment in ohio right everyone's looking at that as absolute horror the sheer anger etc that is out there and i'm looking at it and i'm not I'm, i know this may be triggering i'm looking at it going good i'm glad i'm obviously deeply tragic and heartbroken about all of the creatures and fish and animals that have died and all the people that are maybe probably and most likely going to suffer unimaginable health complications but i am looking at this as a positive i'm glad it happened because people need to wake up and realize that these are not accidents these are manifestations that are done deliberately because people still live in a reality where they think their government loves them and is trying to keep them alive the very concept of that train derailment should be an absolute it is a it is an atypical um example of why governments 
and politicians and the people working on that side of things don't care about you. So you getting angry about it and saying FEMA should have done this and they should have done these regulations and Trump should have done this and this goes back to that is irrelevant. You're still looking at that you are the problem because you're the one who's getting angry, creating your own low vibrational energy and you're not looking for the solution. The solution is this. Don't allow these people to do this in the first place. Let's not live in a world where we allow politics to get so corrupt. Let's not bury our head in the sand every time a politician does something and just blame the other politician. You have to understand it is theatre. They are all working against you. If you still believe that politicians are there, are put in place, voted for by you to make your life better, my friend, you are never going to master your karma because you are forever going to be at the mercy of this stupid system that you can't seem to figure out because you are stuck in your mind, blaming everyone else and not taking responsibility. Those politicians are there because you voted them in. Doesn't matter which one, you voted them. You've accepted the system that was placed before you and you did nothing to change it. And obviously traumatized as well for that, that incident is horrible, but it is a good thing because it is going to be the wake up call that people need. Because it's not just one derailment, it's loads of chemical spills. And, and sensible people, yeah, sensible people that can take the, their emotional politics out of it, yeah? So instead of going, oh, you know, my guys, yeah, yeah, it's their responsibility, but they're doing the best they can. No, instead of doing that, instead of saying, looking at all these politicians and saying they're all responsible, why is it that these things happen? Why does this never change? Why is it always them the us yeah all of that kind of stuff it's because they don't care it's also because you don't understand that these people are where they are for corrupt reasons so the the, the corruption runs so deep yeah that all the catastrophes that are happening around the world yeah are absolutely predictable okay you might not have to pinpoint the where and the what exactly but it's inevitable because this is what happens when we allow when we allow so so much low vibration to permeate society, right? And look, I'll give you an example of that. If you allow if you allow a politician, right, because you don't like the other guy, but you are willing to turn a blind blind eye on their actions, yeah, because you hate the other one even more, that's the problem. What you're not doing is accepting and understanding that it's not a case of them v us or them v them. It's a case that they're all bad. They're all rotten apples. If you're faced with a bucket of rot rotten apples, yeah, all you're doing is picking out the less rotten one. That's what politics is. There are no good apples in there. Do you understand? The apples are on the tree, which you shouldn't be paying for in a supermarket. Yeah, we have to start taking responsibility and autonomy for our own lives. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's really difficult because we're stuck in the system of the cave. Anyway, we're shared in this karma, yeah? Okay? So how we handle and how we interact with our reality is absolutely key. We can't just get angry about everything that we see. And especially when people are getting angry, like, you know, I get passionate about these things. Oh, you can hear it in my voice, yeah? But I spend most of my time and as much of my work in waking reality of being in the present, transmuting and constantly trying to stay in the most positive high vibrational state that i can yeah it's so healthy and it's such a beautiful thing when you get used to doing this you get addicted to your own genius of being do you know what doesn't matter doesn't matter like keep it coming i'm ready throw whatever you want at me like yeah yeah i wrote here like i put this is a kind of like this, yeah, like, this is where the ego and the mind really plays tricks on us, yeah, because what happens in the example of the Ohio derailment, we are getting angry, okay, and passionate on behalf of other people in a situation, right, and that's a beautiful, kind thing, we think that's, we think that's, that's being empathetic. Em a bit of showing empathy and sympath sympathetic etc and it is to a degree but it doesn't actually it's a false economy okay and it's a trick of the devil okay and i'm gonna without getting too like kind of i'm not I'm not putting religion into this the devil is literally just a low vibrational energy right okay it's not it's not a man with horns okay it's a low vibrational energy okay which means if low vibrational energy is out there created and you tweet about it share it talk about it rant about it blah blah all you're doing is taking this energy and manifesting it elsewhere so it becomes duplicated and then before you know it it's everywhere so instead of being contained to the area where it actually you know sadly and tragically 
effect is affecting right what's happening is you are taking that insulin and triggering it to your reality around you let me be very clear about this the tragedy that happened in ohio is awful awful but and this is serious i'm not trying to have a pop or anything where was your anger and your triggering and your your where was all of the hate and the anger and the uproar and the outspoken vocal um whatever when tragedies happened in places like Yemen, okay, or Syria most recently, or Libya, or any of these places. There are, there are things that happen around the world far more tragic and injustices happening all over the world. And yet what happens is you have unfortunately, sadly, we, and I'm not saying you, but we, sadly, only get triggered by what is presented to us on the cave wall okay we are not privy to all these tr horrendous things that are happening in other parts of the world thankfully thank goodness how lucky are we not to be faced with their woes and problems it's also tragic because we, we we are not then in a position to even know it exists right there are things happening all over the world that are hor horrifying in greater magnitude I'm not trying to compare. It's not about your problems worse than mine. What I'm saying is that you didn't care and you, that didn't affect your reality. Yeah, so why are you letting this, right? The best thing to do is to not let either thing affect your reality and focus on you, what you can do to make the change and what you can do to bring solutions if you are connecting with these lower vibrational energies, okay? It doesn't mean throwing money at a problem. It doesn't mean just crowdfunding and then throwing a load of money that all automatically gets lost, corrupted, and doesn't actually help the people. Look at, ha at Haiti, if I'm saying it, look at Haiti, even from the, the hurricane um, that happened there all that time ago, all that money, all the m money that was poured into that was literally corrupt. It all got corrupted and stolen and the people who genuinely needed it never got it. This happens all the time, so again, look at the, the solutions if the solutions that are being presented to you generally probably you need to understand the vibrational level of that money is low vibrational okay yeah just because you have a problem from money it doesn't fix it that derailment right the companies that are carrying those chemicals or the companies or someone is responsible yeah compensation financial compensation isn't going to bring back the lives of any of those creatures okay it's not going to solve the 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 economic and ecological damage that is done it is so gargantuan right so money isn't going to solve the problem it's not going to solve solve the health problems either okay great okay here you go here's a million pound conversation but sorry you got cancer and your life's ended 20 years earlier than it should have right okay so where was i going with that i went off down a bit of a ranty tangent there apologies um so trying to, yeah, here we go. It's a good job. It's a good job I make notes. So trying to deal with other people's karma can connect us to low vibrational energy that is not only ours, it has nothing to do with us, okay? And it binds us to a situation mentally, making it a part of our own reality, okay? So if you sit there all day consuming all the hate and hell in the world, trust me when I say this, unfortunately your very emotions will then be triggered to create and to have a it will it will it won't transmute in a positive way it will transmute energetically into you reacting to things in a way that is that really sh isn't deserving of your or your reality doesn't deserve your energy that you're creating does that make sense i hope that makes sense because it's an important point oh yeah so so before you kind of say yeah but you're just burying your head in the sand we can't all just you know stick our head in the sand and pretend none of this stuff is happening around us i agree okay but what i'm saying is you need to understand and what i will talk about in a minute about how you transmute that karma okay so instead of just getting angry and just throwing back out there more low vibrational energy how can we do it in a way that transmutes it and changes it in the case of the train example again i go back to my and i was thinking a lot about this the other day i'm like okay there is a huge amount of financial and ecological sacrifice and possibly lives that may come with this which is deeply tragic but the good that may come out of this may be that people become so so deeply upset with this system and with this kind of bs happening so much we shouldn't be transporting this kind of stuff we shouldn't be using these chemicals in the first place let's really start coming up with solutions for society to prevent this from happening again and the only people that can do that is us 
So I hope that this inspires people to come up and become inventive and I hope they get paid handsomely and I hope this community support them. If someone comes up with a better solution to said problem in how we can avoid using said chemical and all that, we're far too reliant on all this kind of stuff, okay? We don't need to. Like I said, food grows on trees. We don't need to have food crisis and food banks. Food literally grows on trees. And if we were growing naturally and organically and we were all collectively as a community working towards this, the fruit that we actually grow creates the seeds to create more, yeah? It was all this food and all this kind of harvest and abundance that, that humanity ever needed was all in existence before money was even invented as a concept, okay? So we have to start thinking like we have to start thinking more left field and being braver and you know really challenging ourselves in how we can come up with the with with innovative inventive solutions okay not just growing your own in your in your garden maybe coming up with the idea of going okay you know with your neighbors we'll grow the tomatoes because we're really good at that and you grow the cucumbers and then we split and share you know like there's so many ways to do these things and i'm i appreciate i'm preaching I do try and practice what I what I preach, but I obviously ha there's so much more that I could do. So we are all collectively learning, and as we move forwards in future generations, will if they learn from us doing this, believe me, they will master it better than we ever did. Yeah, and this is this links in beautifully, and I just blagged that into my next section, which is past ancestral karma. Okay, so the very concept of karma being generational is so deeply misunderstood and i might actually just read through some of these notes because i'm aware of time and i don't want to like kind of go off to, on too many analogies and rabbit and down too many rabbit holes karma is not owed to you okay if you could wave a magic wand and stay high vibrational then you can keep karma at bay okay that's a fact so karma is not your destiny okay so if you've lived a past of regret and bad behavior etc okay it doesn't mean that everything is going to come back to you what it does mean though is that if you sink into your low vibrational self you will be attracting the karma that is going to come back to you because like attracts like if however you are creating nothing but love and you're building your reality in a positive way i can absolutely assure you that even if some of that karma does trickle in your reality and you as an individual by by pouring into yourself and creating nothing but goodness and and positive seeds the amount of abundance around you will not be diminished as much if you didn't have it does that make sense so if you're not fortifying your walls yeah imagine like your calm your your positive karma is your kind of like it's your own palace yeah it's your own kind of castle yeah you are you are your own kingdom okay and the very abundance that you choose to grow around you is going to protect your kingdom okay if you do not plant those seeds expect a drought and then expect when a famine does come in for you to be unprepared i know these are very these are kind of an analogies and it's very metaphorical if that's even the right word who knows i went to a rubbish school um but you get what i'm saying right so it's it's understanding the protection mechanism but the reality is often is that that karma won't come back to you because if you have evolved to a level where you are protected okay and that protection is by cutting out your behavior so let's just go to the most obvious one right and i can speak authentically about this okay i have irish blood in me i guarantee for most of you if you know me you know how much of a deviant i can be in the real in that world of of my past abuse of alcohol okay alcohol is incredibly low vibrational it literally when you are drinking it it changes your vibrational state to the point where most of what you are outputting is not kind or good or productive so the more you stay and remain in a low vibrational state okay and if you continue to use alcohol to for whatever reason from an addiction point of view because you feel like you need it or you want it or you desire it or you yearn for it or you lust for it etc all you are doing is keeping your energy low so that you are not in a position to create the love and abundance to build up your fault right the minute you stop the alcohol and you literally make that decision to cut the head off the snake, you literally then become in a position where your time can be better spent in building your future reality. Okay, It is a choice. 
it is literally a choice now i'm not diminishing the power of the addiction of alcohol and how awful it is it is highly addictive and there are many reasons why because people will turn to drugs often because they are trying to numb the sheer karma that they are constantly bombarded by because of their own actions and it becomes a downward spiral the more they drink the more they numb the more they ignore the less they're building they're not fortifying themselves they're not building up their and um, protecting themselves and building up the relationships okay those walls is not just you know it's not it's not just money and things like that it, it, those walls that are going to protect you are the relationships of the people that you love and who are around you okay by you building them up and strengthening them they will also strengthen and protect you. It is a exchange of vibration, okay? If, however, you are neglecting them and you are just selfishly self-consuming, okay, they are not going to be as strong because they're having to try and build, be your strength and deal with you as you slide down the kind of whatever, right? I'm not trivializing it, okay? Believe me, I understand it in, in more than you will ever know, okay? I have a history of problems within my family with alcohol and even myself. I have succumbed to many a dark days and gotten very close to points of no return, okay? However, now I truly am able to look back on those actions and understand that all of the problems that were in my life and around that time were because I was not planting the right seeds. I was doing nothing but planting and creating havoc unbeknown to myself because I didn't understand. I didn't understand that there would be literal consequences to everything I do. And alcohol is a particularly bad one because what you do is that it suppresses and numbs the mind so you don't remember the bad shit that you put out there, okay? So you can be out there outwardly offending people or upsetting people and have no recollection. So therefore, when the karma comes round, you can't even connect it. And this is why this, this then leads towards the victim mentality, okay? So when that karma comes back, it's the, oh, I deserve a drink because I've got such a tough life or, or I've got all these things to deal with, I just need a drink or whatever it is or it could be drug use or whatever, right? Or a combination of both or it could be leaning on people and engaging in other karmic low vibrational behaviours just to get a quick fix and make you feel good, you know, things like sex addiction, etc., etc. You know what a low vibrational behavior is, yeah? No one is, you are, every single one of us is intelligent enough to know the difference between a high vibrational uh, bit of behavior and a low vibrational bit of behavior, okay? So think about this. Most, and this is where ancestral karma is really important, and this is not to, um, again, point fingers of blame, etc. but within your DNA, okay, within you in your genetic makeup, are essences and traits of your parents. And not only your parents, but also your grandparents and their grandparents. And there are essences and traits of generations of people you never met, you've never seen, you haven't got a photo, it goes so far back. This disconnected karma and behavior does live within you because if, for example, let's just say, um, a and it's not. It's not to say. That, like, I'm, no, no. I'm going to go. If, for example, and I'll give it. Let's just use the alco alcoholic example. Okay, the, the alcoholism. If, for example, a child grows up with an, let's say, an alcoholic parent. Okay, not that child's fault. May not even be that parent's fault. That person is drinking for, for a reason. Okay, whether it's right or wrong, we can. Like I said earlier, we can point the finger at judge. Okay, or we can come up with a solution. Right, the solution is not to continue doing what they did and then repeat the history onto your child or legacy or whatever, etc. I know I'm talking generational and things like that. Okay, the key is to be a generational curse breaker or to break that karma by literally changing okay and change does happen in every generation all parents want their children to not make the mistakes they made okay unfortunately in life sometimes we have to make mistakes in order to learn but what we tend to not do is to understand <coughs> the actual intricacies of how these this these mistakes in the form of karma actually come around okay so if you've got a parent who is, you know, who is an alcoholic and in a low vibrational state and is traumatized, and let's just say that 
let's just say that that becomes their legacy and their existence there is no doubt unfortunately and i'm sorry to say this that any seeds of goodness that should have been placed were misplaced and therefore that child did not receive okay that child often then has to deal with the consequence and try and actually kind of grow up themselves or teach themselves or whatever right again this is not about pointing the blame okay i'm just saying it is what it is this is the cause and effect okay so this is why you know having children is a precious gift and a huge responsibility because it's not just about the having to look after them and clothe them and feed them it's about the energy and the reality you're creating for them will come back and have an effect on you because if you create an individual that is constantly bombarded with disappointment a lack of love a lack of security um, you know a lack of conscious awareness where their parent isn't even consciously there because they're high or drunk all the time okay that is going to have effect on that individual and therefore when that individual grows up expect their behavior to be in a way that you may not necessarily like okay it's not to say they will i'm saying it may okay hopefully that individual has the inner strength and this wisdom and the knowledge to go do you know what i'm going to transmute this okay and break that curse okay confirmation there from my nan's clock okay every generation suffered before you you're very lucky yeah i know you may not think it but trust me, when I say the hardships go harder, they are harder the further you go back, right? The standard of living for each generation going back was worse and worse. The opportunities less and less. We didn't have amazing gizmos that can generate you wealth and change your life. We didn't have access to all this literature. It was literally didn't exist, okay? These books did not exist for my parents or my grandparents, okay? They had to deal with their reality in a way that we don't have to. Okay, we have more options and more opportunities. That is a gift and something that should not be squandered. Okay, so I've gone off my notes again. I apologize. I'm just checking. So, how can you work? So, oh, yeah, so. Yeah, so let me just quickly say, so your ancestors may not have been fortunate enough to have obtained the wisdom you possess. In the spirit realm, they are your guides, though, and they are watching over you and desperately trying to communicate with your material self towards your potential. So, whether you believe this or not, okay, trust me, this is just this is more for the spiritual side of things. Your guides, your angels, or your ancestors, okay, are constantly around you. Whether they are there in the physical self that you may not understand if you are coming from mind, but for the spiritual self, I can tell you that they are. And let me explain. I'll give you one example. My nan's clock. Every time that chimes, trust me when I get a good feeling and it reconnects me to not only to my nan, who, I, who was a formidable woman, but an amazing, I really revered and looked up to her. She was amazing, okay? Love and miss her dearly. But it is a constant reminder for me to be aware of her presence and existence, okay? So she's not physically here, she's here in spirit. And what that means is, is that the energy possessed in that clock, every time it chimes or every time I see it, is a constant reminder of her and what she stood for, her values, her standard of living, okay? That's why I use one of her silver teaspoons because it tastes better and it's nicer than having a stainless steel teaspoon okay but again it serves as a constant reminder so our ancestors can are all around us if we choose to allow ourselves to connect with them okay and that can be by using and maintaining their existence in our reality it can be through a photo or whatever it is i have my altar with all kinds of things okay I have so many different things that remind me of all these kind of key important things and even going to ancestors that I never met or connected with but ancient Egyptian ancestors because we're all connected at some stage connected yeah the point being is that these serve as constant reminders about what came before me okay and how lucky I am now and understanding that these constant reminders are there to to try and prevent me from going 
uh, not me specifically, but try, they are there to try and prevent us from just being so much in our head and ourself where we ignore anything around us that would make us behave in a much more higher vibrational self state and the reason why i know i'm right on that yeah and I, I think i'm right and obviously everyone's situation is different is that look if if my nan was an evil wicked woman right i wouldn't have a clock above me right that's logic yeah so be sensible about it but those people that inspire us I and mean, it, it doesn't have to be someone you were genuinely related to it can be a someone that you know from history that totally inspired you or whatever having these things around you it raises yourself it raises your the 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 um the it, it, uh, what's the word i'm looking for it holds yourself to a higher account okay because trust me when that when that clock constantly reminds me of my nan i know that i'm not going to necessarily i, I watch my p's and q's more i try not to curse as much i almost try to behave in a way as if she was actually here right and how you behave around these people will differ to those when you're surrounded by karmic low vibrational people yeah okay very simple i think hopefully that hopefully it's very simple hopefully i've explained that right um so spending time reflecting on our past loved ones helps guide our actions okay and so there's loads of things that you can do to do that okay i think it's important to connect and meditate on those that have passed into the afterlife yeah really even connecting to their past traumas and mistakes and promising them like i'm not going to make that same mistake that is a beautiful way of doing a really powerful affirmation forget just repeating stuff you've seen on instagram right all that stuff of self 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 really start to kind of try and make the changes in your life that on behalf of them right and it will energetically for those who are spiritual trust me when i say this it has an effect okay because your the spirit realm like i said we can't we can't perceive everything that we, we can't see beyond the one percent of what our physical material self can actually experience right but what i'm saying to you is that the energetic world and the realm that exists beyond what we can see is affected by everything we do and say okay so forgiving them and that's so that's another thing so even if you have got people that have crossed over into the afterlife that caused you trauma or you didn't get on with and whatnot and you weren't able to say you weren't able to make amends in the 3d yeah in the in this physical reality it is literally a mental barrier that you have that you are accepting that the amends can't be made because they're not physically here that's literally your own mind telling you it's impossible by meditating and connecting to to their their essence yeah like even just by meditating and thinking of them staring at a photo apologizing saying sorry or or saying i forgive you you can still begin to repair and 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 and, and um transmute that past negative energy okay just because they're not here in the physical by believing that they are that, that it is energetically working okay and you and you've got to remember like Again, I'll give you a beautiful example of this. Like, time is an illusion, right? When you, if you look at the world and reality from your mind, you are bound by time, yeah? Because you are literally, from the minute you are born, you are already dying, okay? It's just how long, yeah? That's all it is, right? Every year you get old, you're just walking towards your death. What I'm trying to say to you is that a photo of you, even after you are gone, that's found 500 years later, yeah? Your energy is there. There's an essence of you. There's a mystery. There's a whatever, okay? So there's a part of you that exists in the future, whether you like it or not. And it's the same for this clock, right? Okay? I know my, nan, my nan's not physically here, right? Okay? But her spirit and her essence is. The emotions and the memories all become real, okay? And that, and that very... The very comfort and beauty that and all the wonderful kind of things that come from those memories, yeah, is powerful. So powerful. Jewelry can be a heavily important one, okay? This is my granddad's ring, okay? Same reason why I wear it. I don't wear it because I like the ring, okay? Or because, yeah, anyway. So your ancestors suffered before 
you, okay, more often than not. And we never get to know what our parents suffer and go through, okay? As a parent, you should know that. You know your kids don't appreciate what you suffer and go through for them, right? So the logic applies going backwards, yeah? So in this reality, even all their mistakes or, or their, their mess-ups or whatever, we wouldn't mind we, we didn't forgive them in, in while they were alive, but we should be definitely forgiving them now and trying to just understand, oh my God, you know what? They were an alcoholic. They were all of these things. But why was that? How tragic is that that they succumbed to? How sad is it that they missed so much of their life through this? I feel sorry for them. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's having that empathy and coming up with a solution. The solution is right. How do I salute? How do I solve this problem? By doing better. Make them proud of me. Yeah, or... or aim to change they would be so proud if i was to break that generational curse if i didn't do what they did yeah and even if you even if a part of you thinks oh they wouldn't care or whatever i can guarantee you they they most people on their deathbed are full of remorse and guilt and, and all of that right it's just a fact where even if they don't believe in god don't believe in religion a lot of people will kind of go they, they will seek that forgiveness and they'll you know and whatever but anyway I'm not trying to like, I know everyone's situation is different, but I'm just going to say that like the very concept of you forgiving all that past trauma that went on, that kind of led to your very existence. Yeah. Because we're all connected through, through the DNA and through, and we all possess the traits and the, we possess the look. I mean, my gosh, like my mum and dad did, dug out a photo of like an old, really, really distant relative who was like, it was, I don't know what year it was. It was like, it was a long time ago, like, hello, hold on, long time ago, and the guy was covered in tattoos, and he looked just like me, it was creepy, it was really weird, he, like, looked exactly like me, but with different tattoos, it was very funny, anyway, so, you know, like, yeah, like, the look and everything, so we possess not only the physical essence of our, of our, of our lineage, but we, pos we also possess that, 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 that trauma, that emo, that karma as well, you know, like, your, the, the actions of your parents will kind of come back to haunt the kids as well, yeah? So you have to be the person that people say, no, nah, they're not like that person, or they, 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 they were the one who, who, who broke the mold and changed, yeah? That's what, it, that's what it all means. It's only you that can transmute that energy, and that in turn then helps release those generational curses and that, that lineage of guilt and shame, okay? just have to surrender and release it. It's done. It's in the past. Nothing you can do about it. The only thing that matters is your reality in the presence right now. So that links again. I did it geniusly to, again to my next note, which is present. I'm not really claiming genius on that. It's written in front of me. But that leads then to present, present karma. How to transmute karma, okay? So you have to separate the self from the situation, right? You have to understand that you are just a material human you are a material being yeah you're you're a human soul having a material experience okay that's that's what i'm trying to, that's what i'm trying to say and i know people talk about it all the time this basically means that karma is automatically disconnected from its root yeah karma is automatically disconnected from its root when we operate from mind and what i mean by that is that when we are operating from our ego or our mind yeah we cannot connect the dots okay because we just become all about the self so when something comes in we kind of like i talked about we kind of don't understand that that was a an effect of our past behaviors yeah so what we end up doing is if we are constantly stuck in our mind and operating from it, we just can't process this this reality around us in the, in the most healthy and sensible way, okay? In order that allows us to then actually build upon it, we end up just getting kind of suffocated by these things and they begin to eat away. And that's why like I um I gave an I gave an example of like if someone if someone if someone gives you trauma, right? Let's just say someone gives you a hot coal to hand, yeah? You have a couple of options. You could either, let's just say you can't drop, right? You could either give it to the next person, so you pass it on, and that's terrible because then you've just given, oh, you've just burdened someone else with your hot coal, yeah? Or what people tend to do, so that's what, a, that's what a narcissist or a psychopath will do, is, I don't care, give that to someone else, let them deal with it. An empath or someone who is, you know, who is, who is on the other, scale, other side of the scale of, 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 of emotional behavior will hold on to it. And bury it and just kind of go, I'll oh, take it and take it and take it to the point where all the pain that they suffer, they don't realize it actually creates trauma. Okay, and it actually makes them a carbon copy 
of the very pain that they are holding on to okay and therefore it almost becomes impossible for them to behave in a higher vibrational state because they're in so much pain and trauma right you cannot put out fire with fire which means you cannot solve anger with anger you cannot solve hate with hate okay the only thing that you have to do is literally throw the opposing element at the situation okay fire is uh in terms of the tower and stuff uh, wands and the wands is the mind and the ego okay and all kind of karma and low vibrational energy all stems from the mind it is not like i say it's not your heart and soul going i'm gonna go out and screw this person over no it's never that it's always your mind because your mind is concerned with the material self with the with materialism and all the physical things that you can obtain or whatever yeah your self-gratification your lust of uh, pride of life and all that stuff right so operating from mind is the very weakness that is literally the barrier to you transmuting your karma okay that also means that if you continually think about your past problems or you're continually stuck in your mind you're not actively transmuting anything you're just manifesting it you are literally just reliving it you're re you are creating more of that energy you are rehashing that energy you are doing nothing more than just fueling the fire okay again the mind is the fire so it, the, the karma that is coming in that was created by the mind in the first place yeah because it's all derives from ego literally cannot be battled with your mind so you have to stop thinking and analyzing except what i have told you which is undisputable truth your mind is weak compared to your heart and your soul your heart and your soul is divinely connected to everything because love is the highest vibration love from the mind is lust okay confirmation right there thank you nan <laughs> she knows So I wrote here like about how you perceive karma being every lesson is a blessing, rejection is protection. We hear all these kind of sayings all the time and they're buzzwords, but they don't help. They just hurt because we're trying to process it with our mind. Yeah. Do you understand? So. Un accepting that if we are dealing with our karma, both projection and what is being attracted to us by only ever operating from the mind and the ego we are only just we are just recycling and either holding on to the coal or just creating more <laughs> trauma by passing it on okay yeah so I, I then wrote a whole load of notes about about like how sensitive human beings are to vibrational energy and i probably didn't really talk about that enough although i kind of did with the psychedelic things that when you take psychedelics you become hypersensitive to everything yeah so the very change in pitch in music can literally change your emotional state now when we operate from our mind yeah and not from a psychedelic experience all of that or our mind is deliberately designed to numb all of these emotions and these feelings okay so we spend so much of our life Rep uh, suppressing these emotions because we deem that as the protection mechanism yeah we think the barriers of the wall to our kingdom is our mind it really isn't that is a fake false protection mechanism okay it doesn't stop the karma from actually entering the kingdom it, it's an illusion okay the mind and the ego is literally as i always say connected to the devil and is a, which is a low vibrational energy so just think about this the very concept of the devil is your mind and your ego and the very concept of let's say god or atom or or whatever you want to call jesus or whatever the savior or what it doesn't matter that let's just call it like lightness that you know let's let's say that enlightenment is the heart and the soul okay the two are so different they cannot necessarily um uh well, yeah they, they don't necessarily exist in the same realm because if you are in a low vibrational state and you are constantly operating from mind yeah you will not be connected to the divine because that divine kind of level of being yeah is just it is impossible to do when you are operating from your ego and your mind because the ego and the mind literally is serving the material self okay this gets I, I don't want to get into a whole deep discussion about kind of like the, about the material self and, and and why the ego and the mind is so devilish 
the mind the ancient egyptians believed and the high priests and high priestesses believed that the mind was a prize to be won okay it is not gifted to you that you are divinely intelligent enough to rise above all these mistakes it is part of our very evolution to the point where we are born in the physical material self and then we are born in the we we can be reborn in the spiritual self those who are not reborn in the spiritual self will maintain in their material existence and therefore be constantly operating from mind and ego and therefore constantly operating in low vibrational realities okay because again they are what their reality is okay if you and i can the reason why i can say this is that if you are operating from mind your actions generally are not going to be serving others and are not going to be you know without some sort of self gain okay if however you are praying from love and the heart which is a high vibrational energy um you are creating those higher energies to to bring back the abundance that you deserve okay so Yeah, so by looking at the situation from the heart and the soul and not the ego and the mind, we can reframe the situation. We literally, that is the very concept of transmuting this, the karma, right? So I put, whether the, this is processing the emotions we feel from this returning energy, uh, sorry, whether this is processing the emotions we feel from this returning energy, not ignoring it, laughing at our misfortunes, okay? So... Yeah, so you, you cannot defeat the mind and you cannot defeat evil, okay? It, the evil that is out there in the world cannot be defeated by you uh, in any capacity, right? Is as long as, as long as human beings are placed on this earth and as long as they are all given a brain to think and emotions to feel, there will be human beings on this planet that operate in selfish, egotistical ways because that is what the mind is. And like I said, the mind is connected to low vibrational energies, which is connected to the devil, which means we justify our actions and behaviors in order to gain something. So that's what the whole mechanism of how the mind operates with the body. And again, I always go back to by making your heart and your soul the master of the mind and not a, not its slave. That is how you begin to become much more powerful and you begin to control your reality and build the reality that you know is going to bring you love and happiness and joy and peace and balance. And it is possible. And you probably do it more often than you, you, than you realize. People do it all the time. They just don't understand it. You know, that those happy moments when you're in a happy state, it's because you're doing all the right things. You just need to to really analyze and just replicate. It's not luck, it's not It's not coincidence, it's not any of that. It is because you are doing all the right things to, to sustain and maintain the reality that you are enjoying or that you desire, okay? You truly desire from the heart and soul, not the mind. I've talked about that. Oh yeah, so I wanna finish, yeah, this is a really important part. So the real way of transmuting karma, right, is that when things come into your reality that are low vibrational is to pour love onto it and to learn to really try and look in for the lesson. What is the what am I being taught here? Why am I being given this pain and this trauma? How can I ensure that I never get this pain and trauma again? If you are in a low vibrational state, drinking drugs, or you're just, you, you, or you, you know, you just pass it on, you ignore it, you suppress it, you're not dealing with it. You're literally just either kicking the can down the road, or you're kicking away your karma, and it will come straight back. It's never going to go away. It will continue to come back unless you learn how to transmute it. So, how can I take this experience and actually turn it into something that is going to give me more strength to build up my barriers, so that when it comes back again? I'm even stronger to the point where it doesn't become an issue. And you won't maybe you may not necessarily realise this, but this is part of part of our own personal growth that we really don't appreciate enough is that this is why mistakes are, are really important and we should fall forwards. It's because these mistakes by accepting them and not fearing them by actually embracing them and actually enjoying the kind of pain and trauma in a slightly sadistic way of going, do you know what? This is this makes me feel really uncomfortable, but 
understanding that once you've processed the situation and you get to where you you know whatever way whatever the outcome is by analyzing and understanding what actions you took got you to said place okay whether it's up or down it doesn't matter yeah that is going to be the weapon and the tool that you are going to need for the future because most people don't even appreciate or respect the growth that they've done if you just go and look at yourself but six months ago whether you are up or down it doesn't matter again you will understand that so much of where you are now compared to where you were again whether it's up or down is based on your behaviors and your choices within that six months it's as simple as that I'm not as fit and healthy as I was last this time last year because I haven't done the running, right? And I've just been eating lots of crisps and ice cream and things like that. So it's just one poor, really bad example, okay? It's not a real world problem, right? But the point being is that I can't then turn around and, and be, and be why, am I, why when I run do I get out of breath? Like, I just have to, un, I can't get angry at myself and then just be put off from it. I have to go, no, okay, I need to change this so that next time next january or february when i'm running again and whatnot i'm in a fitter position i know that i know what needs to be done i know how i build up and protect myself you know in the future from having that feeling of of, of feeling disappointed in myself or or inadequate in my own status of fitness yeah okay and like you know you can only measure and judge that against yourself yeah it shouldn't be judged against what others you should only be judging and measuring your own growth against yourself never do it to the external world you will never ever ever be satisfied that is literally the ego in the mind that's the ego more than anything okay that pride quash that kill that ego learning to really study duality and ancient spirituality will nourish your soul one of the key things that your heart and your soul wants is wisdom. It really yearns for that. The mind loves it too. So this becomes a bridging point where the mind, this is how the mind can become, become one as a gift and how you can conquer this by nourishing the soul with wisdom and actually connecting the two, challenging the heart and the soul to say, can we get the mind to understand this? Can I challenge myself to read and learn about things that go out of my comfort zone? Can I do things that go, go that put me in, in places where I've never faced challenges I've never faced before? These kind of things, believe me, nourish the heart and the soul because what they end up doing is regardless of what the outcome is, whether you fail or whether you succeed, it gives you the strength and the confidence to keep going and keep growing, okay? Not just accepting your fate and your destiny, but understanding that actually I do have it within me the possibility to not only transmute my own energy but to plant my own seeds and create and build my future even challenge things that's scary or things that that used to terrify you and like, i'll give an example the thought of me even posting a video like this terrified me but but less than a year ago and now i've kind of grown in confidence and strength and it's also to the point where i really don't care what people think anymore i don't care if people watch this and ridicule me and mock me or whatever i couldn't care less I hope that they enjoy their reality because I certainly enjoy and love mine and that's all that matters, okay? And that's where, you, that's where we all need to be getting ourselves that place because I know that when I'm in my powerful, balanced, happy state and believe me, I can still engage in things that are technically low vibrational. I love a glass of wine and things like that but I'm just not consuming this stuff to the point where it's getting out of control and it's, sh you know, you have the control is what I'm saying, yeah? The better thing is to not take it at all, not have any wine, because even one glass of wine is kind of pointless. Like, you know, you don't get drunk off of it. It just tastes like wine, right? Okay? The fun of wine is not the, the, the drinking it. I mean, I love, I do like to pretend to be a connoisseur of wine and things like that, but the reality is people drink to get drunk, yeah? Otherwise, they'd only have one glass of wine, yeah? So let's just about keeping being realistic and honest with ourselves. Yeah, I wanted to put this out. So people who suffer the most amount of trauma in society, they are the strongest people. You best believe. You best believe that these people who suffer immeasurable, horrific generational curses and trauma, these are the people that will shape and build the future if they step up. Those that do, 
should be honoured and revered, and ins and they end up they often end up becoming inspirations for others. Okay, so don't ever be afraid of your traumas and your past. They are your strengths. They really are, because an individual who has suffered at the hands of someone else but still got back up and continued and not done the expected thing which is to fall into the pitfalls of repeating said behavior or creating havoc but transmuting that into a much more positive thing those people are literally the angels that walk on this earth okay they literally become angels incarnated because they are able to take their pain and transmute it into love and abundance I'm not saying they could do it to takes no one is born like that everyone has to learn how to do that, okay? Well, maybe some people are born to do that, I don't know. That's a sweeping general statement that I, I don't have experience or qualified to say. But what I'm saying is that some of the most strongest, most powerful people often use their past traumas and transmute it to a positivity. And that actually strengthens and gives them the kind of courage to, 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 to basically do... To, to do feats that are impossible for someone who hasn't experienced said trauma yeah because their life is when your life is comfortable you don't and you're not challenged you tend to just stay in your comfort zone right that's nature that's human nature that's the animal kingdom will do that no one goes out there seeking trauma right no one does okay but often the trick is, is that when they, when these people who have suffered trauma, if they are operating so much from mind, that's when the, the it manifests and cycles get repeated. Okay, so I'm just trying to clarify that. Okay, I've covered this. Future karma. Okay, final stage. I'm aware of time. This has gone on, but I knew this was going to be long. I've talked about that. The mind is a prize to be won every action i kind of covered a lot of this let me just go through my notes quickly yeah okay i haven't covered that so i might read you these bits just as a recap yeah okay that's confirmation the mind is a prize to be won so make sure you do not let the mind ego slash devil get there first okay that is the battle Okay, and it's a mental one. Okay, and in the tarot, the images of the uh, of the uh, the devil card is the number fifteen, and it's the devil sat on a throne, a black half cube with two lovers chained to the cube. And I wrote about this to someone the other day, saying that the illusion is that the chain is not physically round; it's not like suffocating them, and they can't take it off. It's in the in the tarot, it is very clearly depicted as a loose chain. So it's an illusion. Each one of those people are the, the, the lover, yeah, can represent a karmic person, a toxic relationship, but it can also re represent an addiction, uh, a love of a love of drugs, a love of a love of you know of, se of sex, of lots of different. Let me just be clear about this. I've talked about this past. Having sex with loads of different people is an exchange of energy. Sex is literally a, a exchange of energy. Okay, the sharing and exchange of energy. So by having sex with multiple partners, by you physically engaging with them, if that is a low vibrational person, that will have an effect on you. If you're having sex with high vibrational people, that will have a positive effect on you. But it has to be said, you really need to understand. This is why polyamorous relationships are so complicated and should be really carefully considered before you start engaging things. And this whole concept of being empowered by having, by reclaiming your decisions to just have sex freely and openly, that is fine if you want to operate from that mindset. But what I'm saying to you is you have to understand, again, that energy and that that energy that you are creating and the emotions you are connecting to said energy is now out there and it will come back at some stage if you do not understand how this energy and transmute and everything that I'm talking about, okay? But moving away from that particular topic, um, uh, da, 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 the, yeah, sorry, the devil card, okay, in the tarot, the chains are loosely around the neck. So the concept of tarot is not that you are bound to this devil and this, this low vibrational behavior. You literally can remove it. You literally can remove it yourself and walk away. That literally means you have to stop engaging and connecting with the low vibration. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. I'm not saying that, you know, that 
quitting alcohol if you've had a 40 year addiction is easy it's not okay it's a highly addictive chemical okay and, the, and the, most of the addiction and we know this it's not in some degrees it is physical but a lot of it is the mental okay you can't just physically stop drinking some people are so it's so dangerous for them that they it could end up body could go into trauma and shock so obviously go with professional uh, medical advice and stuff but what i'm saying is that the it is an illusion of the devil it's the greatest trick of the devil which is the illusion that you're chained to this that you have no option that you are chained and you don't have a key there is a key out there you have the key the key isn't even needed to unlock you you just have to remove the chain okay um for anyone who's suffering with addictions I highly recommend that you go and look at the studies of psilocybin and magic mushrooms and MDMA in terms of the results of recent studies and how successful and amazing the studies are looking in terms of beating addictions. They have done lots of studies now. Um, I know, the, I know um, all over the world these studies have been done by by medical professionals who are starting to take these chemicals and these drugs seriously and see that the actual benefits and health, uh, uh, the benefits um, in how they can be used to treat problems. This isn't new or modern. Magic mushrooms and DMT and Ayahuasca and, and stuff has been used for thousands of years by tribes and communities in order to treat multiple problems, okay? and you know um lots of plant medicines are very good at treating all kinds of things but you just have to make sure you know what you're doing and you are respecting and doing coming from this from an intelligent point of view by studying it not just recreationally taking said stuff okay um psilocybin and magic mushrooms for people with heavy addictions it can be amazing it can do wonders i did a video about that so i'll try and try and dig that out and whatever but um just go and research i don't want to stop i'm not promoting it it's obviously every use case is different and every individual is different but there have been some amazing results where people with 40 year old hair like you know 40 year old out addictions to alcohol have done one big dose of of controlled dose of of psilocybin in you know with you know underneath doctors and stuff and they've just kicked the habit Okay, it literally resets the brain. So that, that is possible. Don't do it yourself, study, seek a professional. But what I'm saying is the, the key, the op the, it, it's an illusion that you can't beat this. It's an illusion that there is no solution. You are not physically chained. This is not your destiny, it's not your fate. You have a choice. How you do that is down to nourishing your soul with wisdom, yeah? Understanding there's a lot of information out there you don't know that could be really beneficial to you, whether it's spiritual information or like I said, scientific information including the studies they did about covid to do with a favorite plant you know that i like to indulge in um amazing results but anyway the same with, with cbd as well results in cbd treating lots of things we know the same with 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 so with anyway no we're not going down that route because i'll end up shutting this video down okay um the final part of the future um two things i want to talk about quickly before i before i do cut this because i'm aware of time human beings are made up of atoms okay we are entirely made up of atoms and so is the cosmos so there's nothing that separates us we are literally a reflection of the cosmos we are always building our reality just like the cosmos always expanding always changing always growing we are no different we are literally a reflection as above so below yeah what is up there is reflected down here okay same goes for what is within so within and so without okay so with that mindset and truly understanding this yeah we need to understand that our very reality and our actions that connect to our reality is incredibly powerful just by constantly trying to be in the mindful present understanding of this yeah so that means not worrying not using the mind to think about the past or worrying about the future just by existing in the presence and understanding that okay there's chaos all going around the world but it's a beautiful day really nice you know like just staying in that present and just keeping your vibrations high and putting and sowing those seeds of goodness believe me over in a lot quicker than you think actually it doesn't take i'm back um sorry i had to make a cut there run out of story space talking too much um so to wrap this up because it's a long video so but it's important because i feel like hopefully like this is helping 
hopefully the information there's a lot of information in this video but hopefully this is helping people really understand their own karma and their future karma um is understanding that being be, literally remaining in the present okay is the key to understanding and how you can operate from your heart and your soul as opposed to your mind okay there is an old saying that I kind of latch onto a bit which I truly believe in and I think and I'm not to diminish people with mental health problems and stuff um you know everyone at some stage in their life will go through um anxiety and depression it just depends at what varying degrees okay no one is immune from that um but the point being is that depression is thinking and being stuck in the past it's where your mind is constantly re going over old stuff and anxiety is literally worrying about the future okay you don't worry about the past okay and you cannot be depressed about the future that hasn't happened okay does that make sense i'm not belittling those two mentally debilitating um uh problems but it is understanding that where they are placed in context to your reality i.e. past and future two places which don't exist they cannot exist and they never existed they happened to you in the past but they are not in your reality now okay so this is one of the, and this is a hard thing i'm not just saying this is an easy thing oh okay oh, i'm in the present now i think all my problems have gone away if you paid attention to this whole video and you're really listening to what i'm saying you hopefully are beginning to understand that you need to start start learning how to function and operate your mind in a way that serves you this is the key to being a master of your mind and not a slave to your mind okay so And I'm, I'm, I am trying to be very kind of cautious about how I say these things because I appreciate some people who are in their fields or going for a really tough time will just, again, from their mind, just be analysing and criticising and being all stuck in their thoughts and ready to kind of attack and to justify and logic, logically kind of make sense of, of what I'm saying for in a way that justifies their anger towards this, yeah? But the truth, the absolute truth and the reality is, is that if you learn and master how to operate from your heart and your soul yeah and truly do it literally step into how you how you're feeling and understanding the the the, the negative actions and thoughts and behaviors come from your mind and not your heart and your soul it's really understanding the process that it does take practice once you begin to really really truly really truly understand this that's where you can begin to master your karma because like i said again this is this be this basically means that all your past problems that generally are coming back to haunt you whether it's haunt you mentally because it's keeping you depressed about stuck trauma past traumas that's still karma karma isn't just a physical thing that happens to you oh my gosh i can't believe i nearly missed this i meant to say this earlier but karma is an emotion okay it's a, it's how the karma is how you react and how you feel to stuff okay you can have good and bad karma if you do a good deed and that person years later comes back and does something good for you that's good positive karma yeah that seed you sowed that seed that seed that you planted okay grew and may have created an abundance for that individual and they may want to repay you for that further down the line okay it's not you don't do it for that reason okay just to be clear you do it because you love for the love and the heart not the ego and the mind and what you can gain from things yeah so planting seeds has to be done selfishly uh sorry it's not selfishly uh, uh, scrap that a fraudulent se selflessly okay the seeds that you plant has to be done selflessly okay with no expectation of of, of 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 gain or control other than the control of your future karma <laughs> like the, your the the abundance and the and the and the joy and happiness that you are going to be manifesting and building around you okay so one of the most um and this isn't necessarily for everyone but like this is like future your future karma will depend on 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 the future and like the the most obvious kind of layer to that is 
is our is our children okay it is the future children because they will be the politicians they will be the governors they will be the police officers they will be the doctors the nurses they will be all of the facets and, and parts of society that when we get older we'll be relying on them so everything that they are learning and being taught comes from us now i'm very confident and positive that the current younger generations they are a lot kinder the reason why they have so many mental health Health problems and we have so much you know anxiety and depression is because they're sensitive to their environments they are not doing what we did which is just very like our generation did which is or our parents generation which is drink through it and just you know stiff up a lip and we don't talk about it and all that no this generation um, and, and more people should embrace this is, is having a healthy conversation about mental health uh, problems having healthy honest conversations about addictions and traumas having healthy conversations about all these problems that we are faced with in our reality but coming up with collective solutions not just repeating traumas for the sake of without without a, without a sensible logical approach to how it's going to transmute and help okay there is a massive element that talking is a good part of therapy, but it is not the solution. It just helps the big to begin. It helps us begin to process and to kind of um, understand what is going on. But like I said, if you are become so fixated on understanding your traumas and your problems from the mind, you will hit a dead end again and again. You have to begin to transmute and understand it from the heart and the soul, and that involves a awful lot of love and forgiveness for you to pour into yourself and to forgive yourself and your mistakes and for others as well <clears throat> so the next generation and our children by teaching them these tricks and teaching them to understand karma and to understand their vibrations and their energies if we can get them at a young age to understand this my gosh i wish i knew this when i was young if i'd known a fraction of what i've just talked about when i was younger i can absolutely guarantee my life would have turned out completely different but my path was my path and my journey is my journey i have no regrets i had to experience everything that i experienced in order to to be where I am now okay and I'm very fortunate enough to be in a position despite the chaos of the world in a very mentally strong place physically despite me not running as much but I am physically stronger than I was in my heyday of just being a low vibrational karmic moron like most young men particularly from part of the world where I am we we just get consumed with our own stupidity and our own lust for everything that we that is around us that we want to consume because we are privileged um so we need to teach the next generation about the laws of their energy about how they about the the what they create in the world and how they shape their reality because what they create and how they shape their reality will affect us okay so that's key and important um it, it, I want to I want to foot like one more thing by as an adult uh, or as a or as a parent or particularly as an adult I can say this collectively we have this unhealthy obsession and attitude to kind of make children adhere to our reality okay which means that because we've got these schedules and we've got this all these things happening in our world that, that in the world that we understand it we almost kind of shock them out of their innocence and their childhood to try and get them to do and behave how we have been conditioned i would urge anyone out there who whether you've got like um, cousins nieces or children yourself or you have friends that have children and that is that you have to engage in their reality you have to suspend your reality and and engage with theirs which means not trying to force them to see things our way okay that's what parents do all the time we talk down to children we talk at children we don't listen to children time spent with children is better spent listening and learning from them because even though they may talk from in a fantastical and naive and uneducated way what i can absolutely guarantee you is that they operate from heart and soul and less of the mind 
And by them doing that and really observing them, you begin to see how, A, children are on an emotional roller coaster. They go from being really angry and screaming to laughing their head off and it's all forgotten. Children as well are the best at transmuting. What really upsets and aggravates them can be transmuted and they've forgotten about it the next minute. Okay, So we should really kind of observe in how children interact with the said energies that are around them watch how they masterfully manipulate their realities because children are far better at it than most adults okay children really know how to pull the strings and get what they want and all that i can say that as a father of two daughters who i am pretty much a glorified butler that's what i do i pretty much just wait and serve but um jokes aside like and and being in all seriousness like this is why this is why collectively as a community we have to protect them and nurture them and encourage them and support them and pour as much love and kindness and goodness onto this generation not using them or abusing them in any way because that is literally the most lowest vibrational kind of behavior that you can do so we have to be very mindful about that okay i've covered an awful lot here and we've touched on very deep and dark and probably in many cases personal subjects so i hope that i hope the delivery of this makes sense i'm going to kind of chop this up and i'm probably going to i tend to keep my videos raw i don't like editing them because i just feel that it that then it becomes it's like my own ego trying to like control and present something different i let the mistakes be the mistakes and i let my grammar be my grammar and i let my words be convoluted and mixed up and misinterpreted because it is what it is but I do sincerely hope that for, for anyone watching this, if you've painfully watched to this end as well, thank you. Thank you for your time. It is truly blessed. And I hope some of this information has been helpful for you. I often, when I watch these things, I try to remind myself of my own kind of wisdom that I've read because I often forget this stuff too. It's very easy to get caught up in the reality that is presented to us. And often we forget and fail to understand that we are co-creators on this planet even at a tiny little level we have the ability every day to wake up and make a huge difference even in the most small way every little seed that we plant can make a difference and it can continue to grow and to create more abundance we have choices for every single one of our actions okay so much of our actions is occupied serving others and never really serving ourselves or serving others in a way that isn't relating to just making money okay that's something that's really important so much of energy exchange is connected to money that's something that i would want to diminish greatly in the future i feel that you know we always i would you know with the old saying of the the of money being the root of all evil there is a huge element of truth to that because money will literally be is so heavily connected to the material realms okay anything connected to material realms is has the ability to be corrupted okay and to be manipulated for selfish gains especially when the mind is concerned and even more so where the ego is concerned so you know i will be doing my best to take as much from of my own advice from this and to be trying to live each day where i'm planting as much as many seeds of goodness as possible um i hope you do too if you have enjoyed this video please like share and spread the word although i kind of feel that these videos and what i do it finds the right people so it, it let's not get stressed about and it's not about how many likes or views or anything like that but obviously if you find this information useful and you are able to turn or reinterpret it and take my information and condense it and repeat it better do that i definitely each one teach one i'm a big fan of that um in the same token i don't do this for money i don't operate in that realm but if you want to share any pentacles you can follow me at th massacre on various things or you can send pentacles to to thmassacre.eth, links, bios, all that kind of stuff. It's not necessary. I don't do it for that. I do this because I cathartically enjoy it and it helps me process the stuff that I'm studying and also kind of encourages me to practice and put into practice what I am teaching, although it comes across as preaching. I don't mean it to. Um, I'm out. Sorry for the long video. I hope this was useful. I truly do.